We have read a lot of books about fairies in our day. Everything from books where fairies is just a euphemism for supermodels with magical powers, all the way up to books where fairies are quote unquote creepy. And I say quote unquote because after the call everything looks a little different. We thought we saw how bad it could get with Holly Black's modern fairy tales, but a little iron sickness over here, some dead lovers over there, some light torture. What did we know? This book reads like the Hunger Games meets Buffalo Bill's wet dream. Creepy. So yeah, without further ado, The Call. Ireland has been in decline for over 20 years. When the fairies took over the Green Isle, they made sure that no one could leave and anyone who tried mysteriously vanished. Then the teenagers started disappearing. Not for long, only about three minutes and four seconds. And then they returned to the exact spot they were before they disappeared. But in those three minutes and four seconds, they live a day in fairyland, which is a veritable hellscape where if the landscape does not kill you, the fairies hunting you will. And not just kill. If you're so lucky, they'll just kill you. No, most of the time they maim you in the most twisted ways possible. Bodies twisted into literal pretzels, holes torn straight through people's chests, people turned into living clothing, other people twisted into human versions of horses, like anything horrific you can imagine and a couple of things you can't. If someone decided to make this into a movie, it would have to be rated R for graphic depictions of torture. Only the smartest and the most physically fit survive, but even then it's not a guarantee. The odds are 1 in 10. That's why kids are put into schools to prepare them from a young age for the call. Our heroine Nessa is more disadvantaged than most. She contracted polio and requires crutches to get around. Everyone thinks she won't last a fairy minute during her call, but that doesn't stop her from working harder than almost everyone else. Nessa has learned to make crutches on the fly, do hand-to-hand -hand combat, track, and do everything else that her able-bodied classmates do. She has even shut herself down emotionally to keep herself safe, not allowing herself a cookie, let alone romance. The book uses third-person present, but also grazes the consciousness of the other kids around Nessa, including Connor, the self-proclaimed top dog and gang leader of the elite. Also, a giant asshole. Giant asshole might be too gentle of a term. Connor believes that with his elite group of his fellow classmates, he will eventually become king over Ireland. And then when he is king, he will declare that anybody who does not meet his physical standards will not be given any resources. He also has a really creepy crush on Nessa. And I use the word crush, but it does not in any way come close to describing the level of disgusting and horrible that his emotions for Nessa encompass. Which of course he has to hide his possibly rapey feelings because you can't have the king of the elite so much as sexually desire the physically disabled girl. They nicknamed her Clip cloth because of the sound her crutches make when she moves. Ogaline does a great job getting across just how awful life would be if the call were real. People see the population dwindling, their resources are limited to whatever they can produce on the island, women are encouraged to have as many children as possible, and life has been organized around getting as many kids through their trial as possible. All students deal with their reality in different ways. Some people have just accepted their fate and are just going through the motions, other people are hell-bent on having as much fun as possible, and some kids are just very, very focused. It's taboo to talk about what you would do if you survived the call. And your punishment for breaking school rules is to be put in a cage with no food, which is terrifying because what would happen if you got called while you were in that weakened state? Nessa is a great heroine. She's smart, she works hard, and her attitude about survival and what she needs to give up in order to achieve it is very understandable. She's also one of the first to catch on that the innocent old child killing fairies are up to something. Something other than being complete dicks. Weird things like finding one dead in the forest and mysterious slaughters tip her off. It is nice to see fairies portrayed as complete monsters. The most we usually get is some dangerously beautiful fairy who's ultimately redeemable with a couple of fairy villains thrown in there to mix things up. There is nothing remotely redeemable about these fairies from the call. You want them exterminated from Earth, and the pact that they talk about where the fairies were banished to their own realm, you can see why the ancient Irish did it. I'm just surprised that this book is scholastic. It's a little grim for what I usually picture coming from them. 
But the call is definitely worth a read. It's different from everything else out there, and it will send a bit of a shudder down your spine. The world building and characters are great. The writing style is unusual as well, and that may or may not be a bit of a barrier to some people. But all in all, when you see this book on the shelf, pick it up.